we last left off, our bundle structure looks something like this, right? We had um, our two entry points with their own individual uh, component uh, bundles or modules. And then we had a commons chunk, which consisted of all this other stuff, right? So while this is a great step in the right direction, there's more optimization that we can do here, which is really awesome. And Webpack will take care of most of the work for us. We just have to be a little bit smarter and go in another extra step with how we use the comments chunk plugin. So if you notice here, um, this is a very simple app. So we won't see too many benefits from going a step further, but you know, imagine your app grows, right? So say you're building full application, you might have React, React DOM, you know, it is 2016. So uh, jQuery, Redux, Saber, we're using all these uh, libraries here. And in addition, say we have more pages um, and we have more shared uh, modules that we might be using. So in addition to our nav bar, maybe I've made a footer, a sidebar, you know, any number of extra UI components that I have now that I'm sharing. Um, I'd probably want to use across multiple entry points. Um, and of course, these can also grow in size and amount as well. Um, so you can imagine that size is very important and how we split things out once you get into a bigger app. And the way we can optimize this uh, downloading is by taking care of um, caching, uh, client-side caching. And the way we can do that is by making sure that we change uh, only what needs to be changed when it needs to be changed from each individual bundle. Now, that was a little bit confusing to say, but what I basically mean by that is, let's think about what needs to change when we push a new update to our repo and what doesn't need to change, right? So what doesn't need to change? So these libraries here that I have notated in gray, those can be representative of, you know, usually libraries, but typically any code that is shared across uh, multiple uh, entry points in your app and in which the code for those uh, modules is never going to change or will very infrequently change, right? So these libraries, you're not going to be changing those. The only time you'll really change them is if, you know, a new version comes out and you decide to update, right? So in order to take advantage of client-side caching, right? Because not only are these libraries probably pretty big in size, again, they don't change. So what we wanna do is we wanna separate these out from the rest of our, our personal application code, which is more subject to frequent change, right? And what that allows us to do is when clients revisit your website, they can keep using a cached version of your library bundle, right? And that way, uh, they don't have to download this giant chunk if they've already been to your website. All they have to do is, if needed, um, they can download a uh, just the new uh, bundles that they need. So even the shared, if you push a small update maybe and it only affects this one component, uh, Webpack will be smart enough to only update this one bundle and it will leave these other bundles alone. So even in that case, you're still reaping a lot of benefits because your client only really has to re-download this one bundle, right? Um, and again, you have to make sure you're implementing caching correctly on your server, but of course that's outside the scope of Webpack, but Webpack will definitely give you the means to do so. Um, so basically it, what we wanna do is we wanna separate things out like this. We're gonna be doing, um, keeping the entry points the way they are, uh, our comments chunk will now only consist of code that we are developing with, shared code that we are developing with. And we wanna make a vendor bundle now that is consistent of, you know, again, external libraries that won't be changing at all. And then finally, to really take advantage of uh, the caching here, we wanna make sure that we're separating out our bootstrapping as well. And that might sound confusing, but it is very important because the thing is, a lot of people will um, lead the bootstrap and the vendor in one bundle and think that you know everything's okay. The problem with that is that the bootstrap is where Webpack keeps an ID track of every single module in your uh, application. 
So even though you might not be editing the code in your vendors libraries over here, anytime you make a change or add new modules or anything like that, the bootstrap module actually changes because again, that's where it keeps all the IDs. So if you're bundling your bootstrap with your vendor, then Webpack has no choice to, uh, but to recompile your, uh, your bundle over here. And therefore you're basically losing all of the value you get um, from separating your vendor files out. So it's very important that we separate this out as well. Okay. So what that can basically be turned into is this, and we need to respect this uh, dependency hierarchy because um, the, the order in which we load these scripts on our page is very important because one, now that we're separating all these things out, um, you know, you'll, you'll run into errors if they're not loaded correctly. Now, luckily, the, um, if you're using the HTML plugin, like I showed you, um, it'll take care of all this for you. So you don't really have to think about it, but it is just something you need to keep in mind. And especially when you're figuring out what's the best way to split out, um, chunks and bundles in your app. Okay. So let's look at the code here. Um, this is, I'm going off of what we had in the last video. Now, one thing to keep in note here is that I am using my uh, Webpack watch command instead of the Webpack dev server. Um, and I'm just doing this because I'm going to be looking a lot at the source files here in the browser. Um, and if you use Webpack dev server, it does put some extra code in there. Um, so I just wanted to keep it clean. So just for the sake of this video, I'll be using npm run build that we set up before. I'm just refreshing. Okay, so as you can see, we're on this app page. We've got the app uh, chunk or bundle and our comments bundle, which has jQuery. Um, and if I scroll all the way down, has our nav bar. Okay. And the very top here you see has the bootstrapping, just where we left it. So what we want to do is use the comments chunk to separate stuff out. So what we can first do is make the instead of just having like we had before just the comments chunk like that can actually make an array and now what this is basically equivalent to is running uh, the comments chunk plugin multiple times now if you want to run the new the comments chunk plugin multiple times but with different configuration options you need to actually instantiate a new comments chunk plugin but for this um this example this will work just fine for us. So what I'm first going to do is I'm simply going to do this. So by adding another chunk here, we're basically extracting two folds, right? So just like our hierarchy over here, we've extracted out common components from these two entry points. What I'm going to do again is forget vendor for now. We'll get to that in a second, but I'm going to again extract it out um, on top of that, any common chunks. So I have to restart Webpack. Okay, let's refresh the page. All right, so now you see I have app, commons, and bootstrap bundle. Check the bootstrap bundle out. So the bootstrap bundle contains the Webpack bootstrapping, and that's it. So you have to think like, okay, what is what is common between these two entry points? Well, we have the nav bar, we have jQuery, and we have the um, the uh, webpack bootstrap right and then if we were to run comments chunk plugin again it says okay now that i've already done this what is possibly left that is common amongst all these things oh the webpack bootstrap right so not in all cases i'd imagine but i want to say probably 95 percent of cases if you just add another uh chunk here to the end the only thing that webpack will have left to draw out will probably be the bootstrap okay so you see, just by adding another chunk here, we've pulled the bootstrap out. So all that's left now is to separate out um, the gray code here from our shared code in the comments. So we're going to make these two chunks now, right? And of course, there's several ways we can do this, um, but the the probably the most straightforward way to do it is if we go up to our entry point, we can actually make a vendor entry. And if we make an array instead of a string, we can actually define the exact um, modules that we would like to put in this bundle. 
So I'm using jQuery only right now in this example. So I'm gonna just put jQuery in here, but again, you can put as many as you want. So you could put React in here, um, whatever else you might need. Um, okay, and then down here, we're gonna actually, what's really cool about this is you can actually specify the name of an entry point, right? It's a little confusing, but what I'm doing here, when you specify an entry point, it will basically, these, any modules that you put inside of it will automatically be extracted out into this chunk, right? And so by doing that, you're saying, you're telling Webpack, hey, I specifically want you to put the code for this uh, module in this chunk. Therefore, any, uh, any references to that module that you find in the, any lower chunks, I want you to reference inside this chunk instead. So what I'm basically doing here, just like we had over here, is instead of having these, um, instead of having these two entry points reference the commons chunk for J, uh, jQuery, it's now going to reference vendor, okay? And I'm just doing it in a more explicit manner. So what we're doing here is, um, to fill this hierarchy out, right? We're using the commons, we're using a empty commons chunk plugin or a, a new commons chunk to pull out the shared code here, right? And then um, the vendor chunk is pulling out specifically jQuery from that. Then last the bootstrap will pull out um, the anything that's left and which in this case is pretty much just Webpack Bootstrap. So let's go ahead and run that. Okay, refresh. All right, so let's check out. So in app.js, you see that I have um, the app uh, entry point and the its content component or module. The next thing up is commons. Commons just has the nav bar, okay? <clears throat> Um, and then in vendor, you see we just have jQuery. And in Bootstrap, we just have the Webpack bootstrapping. That's it, All right? So it's really cool. All we did was, <laughs> all we pretty much did was add two more strings um, to this one property here. And you see we've gotten amazing results. Now, the cool thing is I did accidentally leave this on here. So the, the cat's out of the bag, but um, what we can do here to take advantage of this now for um, client-side caching is we can use the chunk cache property that Webpack gives us um, in our file name under output. So what that basically does here is if you see my terminal, it appends a chunking hash to um, your bundle name. And this is great because now if you notice, so just keep an eye on the vendor, right? The vendor uh, chunk cache is 4C2 and the app is ed6. So now if I go into app, right, and I was to just, um, you know, type some garbage in, change it, Webpack, first of all, is smart enough to only recompile two things. It first sees that you've changed app.js, right? So it, it uh, recompiles that, and then it uh, adjusts the bootstrap accordingly. So what's really awesome about that is if I refresh the page now, you see, okay, app has been re recompiled. Therefore, it has this new chunk hash, which is 5,000. And therefore, we are loading up the appropriate file. But if you notice, remember, my vendor chunk hash is 4C2. If you look in here, we're still referencing that file. So basically, Webpack is smart enough that it figured, okay, you only changed these modules. Therefore, I'm only going to update these bundles. And again, what that means for our end game here is that when a client loads up your page, they're only downloading what they need to download since um, the last changes made to that specific piece. And again, in the case of this vendor bundle, it's probably never going to change or very infrequently change. Right? So I hope that uh, that explains things and helps